The Silk Nam Genocide The Silk Nam people were once an indigenous tribe living on the Tierra del Fuego in the southern tip of South America, now a part of modern-day Chile and Argentina. Known for their tall heights and unique painted bodies, the Silk Nam had lived in this southern region of Patagonia for thousands of years, until the late 19th century when they encountered European settlers for the first time. However, it was this fateful encounter that led to their demise and extinction as a tribe. In the mid-1800s, there were around 4,000 South Nam people in total. Just half a century later, and by 1919, there were only 297 left. By 1930, there were only 100. And finally, in 1974, the last full-blooded Selgnam perished. The Selgnam tribe was declared completely extinct. So why did this tribe die out? What exactly happened between the Europeans and the Selgnam that led to this? First, one must answer the question, who were the Selgnam? The Selgnam were one of three tribes living on Tierra del Fuego. Their men stood at an average height of 187 centimeters tall, and were rumored by European explorers to be the giants of Patagonia. They primarily survived through nomadic hunting and gathering. Despite the cold subarctic climate of the Tierra del Fuego, which had temperatures of 9 degrees Celsius in the summer and 0 degrees Celsius in the winter, they often only wore just loincloths. The Silk Nam also lived communal lifestyles, meaning that they didn't believe in the concept of private land and animal ownership. However, this was what contributed to later conflict with the European settlers. In the late 1800s, due to a boom in sheep farming, European ranchers moved in large numbers into Patagonia and Tierra del Fuego. They moved onto lands that were once the ancestral hunting grounds of the Selkna and established multiple sheep ranches there. To the native inhabitants, these sheep herds were seen as game rather than property and thus began hunting them. As a result, the ranch owners saw the Selknam as a dangerous threat to their profits, and hired armed groups to hunt down and kill any Selknam they found. Bounties were paid out for each Selknam kill, which was proven by bringing back ears, hands, or even skulls from their corpses. There were also higher bounties given for killing women rather than men. Around the same time, the Tierra del Fuego gold rush also took place. Many Europeans moved into Selgnam territory for the prospect of mining gold. One of them was a man named Julius Popper, who was at the forefront of the extermination campaign against the Selgnam. Known as a modern-day conquistador, Popper led his private army to slaughter every last Selgnam they found. He later declared himself the ruler of Tierra del Fuego, and even issued his own gold coins as a currency. Due to his actions, many Selknam people were massacred during the genocide. The genocide of the Selknam continued for years. Thousands of people lost their lives, whether by violence or by disease brought by the Europeans. By the early 20th century, their numbers were reduced to a mere few hundred. But even then, the repression of the Selgnam didn't stop. The remaining survivors from the initial genocide were forced by the Europeans onto reservations or even concentration camps like on Dawson Island. Women were also often raped and traded around by the settlers. Some families were even enslaved and sent to Europe to be exhibited in human zoos or circuses. Many ended up dying on the voyage or after harsh conditions while being treated as wildlife. After the loss of their territory, culture, and traditional way of life, the Selknam tribe died a slow death over the following decades. The last full-blooded Selknam woman Angela Loich died in 1974. 
The last speakers of the Selknam language later died in the 1980s. After decades of rape, murder, and enslavement, the Selknam tribe was officially declared extinct. Despite all of this, the Selknam legacy is not over yet. According to the 2001 Argentine census, there are still hundreds of people of Selknam descent living on the Tierra del Fuego to this day. There are still efforts by those people to bring back the once forgotten tribe. One example is a descendant in Chile, Holbert Yantan Gomez, who now goes by the Selknam name Cayuc. Since the early 21st century, he's been trying to revive his people's once extinct language through studying history and educating others on the topic. Others like Cayuc are still living throughout modern day Chile and Argentina and are still fighting to honor the memory of their ancestors' demise. They hope that one day there will not only be justice for the atrocities committed, but also the chance to reclaim their lost heritage and come back once more as the Selknam people. This is what was done.